There have apparently been no discussions about a Jeff Hardy AEW return, Ring of Honor has re-debuted under Tony Khan, and a backup is reportedly in place for a WrestleMania match. Stay tuned to find out all the deets. So Jeff Hardy has been off AEW TV since his DUI in uh, June of 2022, last mm. year. Uh, he recently pled no contest, and this has of course led to an uptick in discussion and, and fan curiosity uh, as toward like a, a, a potential AEW return yeah. of Jeff Hardy. He's certainly somebody who is you know beloved in the wrestling sphere and mm -hmm. who a lot of people still want to see perform. Uh, but speaking on the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy podcast, when asked about Jeff's potential return, Matt had the following to say. That hasn't been talked about. Will it happen? I mean, maybe. Will it happen? Maybe not. I don't know. But that hasn't been something that's been talked about at all at this point. It certainly wasn't going to be like his court case gets done, he shows right back up on Dynamite. Uh, Matt went on to then say that he would like his brother to change up his in-ring style mm. before any potential return, touching on Brother Nero as an example of a direction Jeff's already gone in that involved less risk in the past and kind of saving the, the bigger high-risk moments for, you know, I guess seasoning now. Like yeah. really special moments where it's very impactful rather than it just being a central part of the style. Yeah, for sure. I think that's something that a lot of people have talked about. I'm sure yeah. we've absolutely talked about that on the mm. news before as well regarding his DUI um, stuff and being like, if he does come back to the ring, we do want to maybe not see him go quite as hard. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like the high, the high spots and everything, mm. definitely. Um, and, you know, I think if... Matt is one of those wrestlers that can can do that too. Matt's very good at reinventing yeah. himself. And, well, that's it, isn't it? And I think with Matt behind Jeff in that capacity, um, I'd like to see that. I'm sort of also glad to hear that um, the return hasn't been talked about, and, it, and I'm assuming I mean, um, more focus has been put on making sure that Jeff is is getting much better. And it seems that AEW really have handled it in that manner. You know, mm. it's all been very much directed to making sure that Jeff is you know, getting the care he yeah. needs. Uh, but again, as somebody who would, you know, you know, my youth is tied very much to the Attitude Era. I love oh, the yeah. Hardy Boys. I would love to see Jeff back in some capacity when he feels ready for it. Yeah. But at the same time, if he was to not return, he is again, somebody I've said this before, who undoubtedly must have years and years of wisdom just kind of sitting there. Yeah. That he would be, he would make it like a, a great backstage producer or mm. a trainer or something you'd imagine. Yeah, that's a good point actually. I never saw have thought of it that way he's a very creative man yeah. and um and i could see him and i remember like where but sometime last year we were talking about uh him pitching ideas i think to vince about certain things and there was some mental stuff in there yeah there was definitely some <laughs> mental match stipulations and things in there but at the same time i think someone as creative as jeff you can probably like pick and choose little bits and then help develop them and change them in yeah. certain ways that would work on TV. So that's not about it. I never even thought about that. So that's pretty good. Actually. Well, when, uh, whenever any more news regarding this breaks, we will keep you posted, of course. But moving over to MLW now. Uh, now, Major League Wrestling is currently fielding an antitrust lawsuit against WWE. This has been since, I think, last January. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's regarding WWE apparently interfering with streaming deals and potentially talent poaching as well. Mm. Uh, as I think there's a few other things on there, but they were the kind of two big headers. Yeah. Uh, but now it looks like MLW's TV deal with Reels seemingly won't be lasting much longer. Now, MLW Underground has only been airing on the channel for a few weeks, and it's been averaging about 83,000 viewers per episode, which is class. Yeah, it's not uh, bad. But Variety have reported that MLW's partnership with Reels is set to wrap up after 10 weeks. Mm. Now, this comes after Reels announced their linear channel and on-demand programming is going to be available on Peacock from March 1st, so it's already on there. Mm. Uh, MLW Underground, which at 10 p.m. on Tuesday nights cannot air on Peacock, of course, as WWE has an exclusivity clause in their agreement with Peacock. <sighs> so if you're going to have wrestling, you can only have WWE wrestling. Uh, the quote is that Peacock is also exclusive streaming provider of WWE wrestling. Because of that category uh, exclusivity, when Reels airs Major League Wrestling live on Tuesday evenings at 10 p.m., its linear channel won't be available on the platform during that time, but Major League Wrestling wraps up after 10 weeks. Major making Reels Tuesday 10 p.m. linear offerings available after that, Variety wrote. Uh, now, if MLW Underground is going to be airing on a different channel after 10 weeks, that hasn't been revealed. Mm. Um, America is 
especially in media, it, it, it's very conglomerate heavy. Mm. So, you know, it might be that Reels has a parent company that owns, say, 15 more channels, some of which might not be tied into something like Peacock. So it may just be a case of a channel switch. Yeah. It could be an amicable parting of the ways, you mm. know, especially with um, this antitrust lawsuit and touching on, you know, uh, influencing streaming deals and then for yeah. this to happen. Uh, it's certainly got to be a bit... Uh, uh, just, uh, just a little bit of a hard thing to swallow, I guess, I, for, definitely. for MLW. And I'm kind of hoping that someone does pick them up because even though their roster is quite small and, mm. and condensed, there's still a lot of really good talent on that roster yeah. as well. And, and MLW have proved consistently that they have staying power. Yeah. I, I think that it's just a matter of time before they, they kind of elevate to that next level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if this is going to be a bump in the road, it'll be a bump in the road, but I think they're going to find another channel. Yeah, for sure. fingers crossed. I, I really do hope so because I remember watching some, I think, Leo, some Leo Rush matches from yeah. MLW maybe last year or, or maybe even the year before or, or something. But like, I was like, wow, it's genuinely really, really good yeah. watching. Like really, really good watching. And I was sort of hoping that they would kind of rise up a little bit more mm. and more people, more people's eyes are getting on them. But like 87,000 is not too bad though. No, like at the it's same cool, time, it's it? pretty good, yeah. Well, there was another big return in the world of independent wrestling last night. And that return was Ring of Bloody Honor. What? Ring of Honor's finally back on Honor Club. You can watch it right now. You can. Uh, but uh, obviously it's under the ownership of Tony Khan. All of that's been going on. It's been kind of considerable hype leading into the mm -hmm. event. A lot of people unsure about how it was going to land. Uh, but the episode seemed to largely go off without a hitch. So we're going to run it down for you now. Mm. Uh, we started things off with Ring of Honor tag champion Mark Briscoe defeating Slim J with Aria Davari and Mark Sterling. You got Tony Depp in challenging Ring of Honor world television champion Samoa Joe to a match next week as well. And then we had the Kingdom defeat the Infantry. We had IWGP TV champion Zack Sabre Jr. defeat Blake Christian. Me and Adam spoke about, obviously, Zack Sabre yeah. Jr. earlier in the week turning up at this. And we were like, oh, I wonder if this is going to be a catalyst to then uh, push towards uh, Danielson and uh, Zack Sabre Jr. match. We were speculating yeah. that. And then semi, he's sort of semi-challenged after the match, uh, a Danielson, a Danielson battle was, as well. I believe it was during the match. I think oh. he um, I think he was <laughs> in the middle of, of locking <laughs> something on and just claiming to be the best technical Good wrestler lads. in the world. Uh, so it's all kind of building toward that, hopefully. You've got to hope. You've got to hope because that's going to be a hell of a match. Yeah. Uh, we then had Christopher Daniels defeat Rohit Raju. Mm -hmm. We had Aussie Open Challenge, Rep Titus and Hot Souls Tracy Williams to a match next week too. Uh, Kanosuke Takeshita defeated Josh Woods with Mark Sterling. Uh, Six-man tag champs, the em Embassy, sorry, defeated uh, Joe Keys, Rex Lawson, uh, Lawless, sorry, and LSG. And then we had Ari Davari defeat Metalik. You had Madison Rain and Sky Blue defeating the Renegades. Wheeler Yuta then issued an open challenge. Uh, Timothy Thatcher accepted oh. it and it's set for next week. This came after Yuta was kind of called the, the I guess, the not the weakest, but kind of the lesser member of Blackpool Combat Club. Ooh, and he kind of flared that up a little bit because he's a tough boy. He's, a, he's about to prove himself. <laughs> let me tell you that. Him and Timothy Thatcher, that's going to be really, really good. Uh, we had Willow Nightingale defeat Lady Frost and uh, she's now set to face Athena for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship next week. Yeah, and then we had Ring of Honor World Champion Claudio Castagnoli defeat AR Fox. I'm just happy AR Fox is finally getting a look in. Yes. He's somebody I thought that, uh, I've said this before, I thought NXT would have snapped his hands off. Oh, absolutely. Back um, when the getting was good. Definitely, but also to sort of uh, to to lead off what we were talking really about, stoke those flames to a bit. Stoke those flames. What we was sort of what we saw on AEW with uh, Eddie Kingston seemingly quitting AEW. Well, let me tell you now, he uh, turned up post main event uh, and uh, states he's now an independent contractor. He wants Castagnoli, and since they're not in AEW, Kingston isn't breaking his promise to Moxley. And then Claudio just walks off. So it seems like Eddie Kingston is going for the ring of honor championship i'm excited i'm going to be tuning in next week to, yeah. and hopefully this momentum can continue i'm a big fan of the aesthetic as well so mm. far it kind of it's given me full sale vibes that's um, exactly what i was so thinking I, as well. it's, yeah it, it's just feeling like you know hopefully we can just keep this momentum going we got joe making an appearance next week of course as mm -hmm. well uh so yeah ring of honor's back but moving over now to our final story of the video uh this concerns a backup that's reportedly in place for a wrestlemania match which match is it well, 
It's almost Brock, which yes. is certainly one of the more out there <laughs> matches set for WrestleMania 39, with many pointing to potential Vince Puppet Mastery yeah. getting it on the card. Uh, some have pointed to the match as a red herring of sorts, potentially something like where, you know, you think you're going to get one thing mm. and then it's potentially a bigger thing happens. Yeah. Uh, Fightful Select have reported that the company is still leaving options on the table, though, saying mm. that Omos Lesnar is the current plan for WrestleMania, though it was hinted to us that there was an undisclosed backup, but it isn't factored into creation creative plans. Now, with the backup not being factored into creative, you've got to think that we are getting Omos Lesnar outright. Yeah. Uh, but as we've reported already, Brock approved working with Omos, mm -hmm. so the unnamed backup might just be there in case that approval ever changes. Yeah. Uh, and we also previously reported this yesterday, I believe, that uh, Brock's options were originally Wyatt, yep. Lashley, Stone Cold, and Gunther, with all of them kind of falling through for various reasons. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I, I'm kind of looking at Omos Lashley. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe, maybe we get shocked. Maybe we get surprised a little bit. Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect it to go very long, at least, anyway. Um, yeah, almost. Quick, big boot. One, two, three. But, I guess, <laughs> but I'm guessing, uh, I think it's always good to have a backup in place anyway. Yeah. Uh, You've got to imagine most Mania matches have this. Yeah, definitely. And and there's some. And me and Adam were spoken about this uh, yesterday too. To some casual fans, the prospect of two big beefy boys going at it is uh, quite tantalizing yeah. to some. Um, and that's fair enough. Uh, but I guess we'll see how it <laughs> plays out. So these other these other no names that they've mentioned yeah. with Stone Cold and that. Who's that? Like, who even wants that? <laughs> who wants to see anything like that? Uh, give us Omos. Omos, undisputed champion for life. Well, that is it for our first wrestling news video of the day. Wherever you are, we hope you're having a wonderful one. We'll be back later on with a little bit more news when some more news breaks. But yeah, have a good one. Catch you in a bit.